Worthy is the Lamb. Shall we pray? Our kind Heavenly Father, we want to ask that your presence be with us as we open and read your word. May you strengthen us as we journey to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Many people are scared, even afraid of the book of Revelation. They think that it is a dark, frightening book of persecution, the mark of the beast, a failed world economy, of plagues and disasters. However, I want to let you know that the book of Revelation is a joyful book. It is filled with cheering songs for the last day pilgrims. And I want to say, my brothers and sisters, we should take time to read the book of Revelation in these last days and focus on the cheering songs that are in that book. When I was in college, I used to have a friend I used to go exercising with and every time I would run, I would just outrun him. Then one day when we were coming from classes, he says, uh, uh, Chifamba, let us run to the dining room. I said, no, why should we run? No, I want us to see who can be the first to get there. And I said to him, my friend, it is obvious. I will get there before you. He said, no, 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 let us run. And we started to run. But before I knew it, the man shot and went straight to the dining room while I led behind. And uh, as he was running, the ladies were cheering him, calling his name. And when I arrived, I said, my brother, how did you outrun me today? He says, Chifamba, you can outrun me when we are running together, but when ladies are cheering me, no one can outrun me. And I want to say, my dear brothers and sisters, we have cheering songs from the book of Revelation, and no one can outrun us when we have those songs. Turn with me to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 5, and we read verse 9 and 10. It says, and they sang a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And thou hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Thou art worthy Amen. to take the book, the Bible says. I, I want to say, my brothers and sisters, Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. If your church is selective as to who goes to that particular church, it's not the church for Jesus Christ. It is a social club. Because the Bible here says, Thou hast redeemed them by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, uh, nation, and people. Everyone is included. And so, my brother and sister, as we uh, go into these last days, we can truly go into these last days singing, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, his child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. I want to ask you, my brother and my sister, what is the theme of your thoughts? What is the theme of your song? What did you think of all day long? There are many people because of this uh, pandemic who are always fearing death. 
fearing the pandemic, I want to say, my dear brother, as we open the book of Revelation, let us look beyond today. There's an interesting quotation from the book, My Life Today, uh, page 327, paragraph four, it says, many professed Christians dwell too much on the dark side of life. When they might rejoice in the sunshine, uh, they repine when they should be glad. They talk of their trials when they should offer praise for the rich blessings they enjoy. They look at the unpleasant things and hold up the disappointments, sigh over their griefs, and as a consequence, they uh, grow heavy hearted and sad when they should count up their blessings when they uh, would find them so numerous that they would forget to mention their annoyances. I want to ask you, my brother and my sister, what is anointing, uh, uh, annoying you today? I want to say, uh, what is it that you always think and fear? I want to say the book of Revelation gives us a song. It gives us a song. A cheering song in this dark world. It is uh, uh, Job 35, verse 10, that says, But none say, Where is God, my maker, who giveth songs in the night? Might be, my dear brother and my dear sister, that you have so many things that are. Because of the heavy burdens, you say, Jesus said, come unto me, only that labor, and I have laden, and I'll give you rest. And Jesus says, he can give us a song in the night. In your night, God can give you a song. Songs have always sustained God's people in dark moments of life. When David was hunted like a beast of prey, having obtained victory for, for, for Israel, he took courage from cheering songs. And you hear him say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I want to say, God always gives people a song in their night. It was when Paul and Silas were in the prison, having done nothing wrong. Actually, they had actually uh, cured someone from a demon. And now for the uh, work of God, you know, sometimes you think when you work for God in that school, you think everyone is going to say amen and amen. I want to say you can work for God and be in prison. You can work for God and be a castaway. But I want to say, even when you are a castaway, God can give you a song in your night. The Bible says here in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners had them. I want to say, when you walk through your dark valley, don't spread darkness to everyone. When you walk through your dark valley, give someone a cheering song. Can someone's life be better because they met you today? This is what happened with Apostle Paul. They sang and the Bible says the prisoners heard them. And not only did the prisoners hear them, in their night, the jailer was saved and his household. I want to say, my dear brother and sister, when you go through the dark valley, as we are going to go through the times of persecution and hardships as portrayed in the book of Revelation, the people of God must show that they know a God who holds the world in his hand. The Bible says, these are people they sang and the people were saved. But I also want to say, my dear brothers and sisters, they looked beyond their chains to future glory. And this is what we should always do in life. 
Look beyond the immediate. Lift up your eyes to the God of heaven. This is why the Apostle Paul later on wrote in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we read verse 16 to 18. For this cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, waketh for us a far more exceeding and uh, eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. The Apostle Paul, if you look at the way he suffered, he yet says in his, uh, in his writing, our light affliction. Just take your time to read how the Apostle Paul suffered. And then you say, could this be called light affliction? Can you compare it with what you are calling suffering today? Can you compare it with your tears at that university? Can you compare it? And yet he kept a song in his heart. The, 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 the Bible say, I'm sorry, the uh, testimonies, volume 8, uh, page 44, uh, and I read paragraph 1. Listen, 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 dear friend, what it says. We must have a vision of, of the future, of the blessedness of heaven. Stand at the threshold of eternity and hear the gracious welcome given to those uh, in this life who cooperated with Christ. Regard it as a privilege and honor to suffer for his sake. As they unite with the angels, they cast their uh, crowns at the feet of the Redeemer, exclaiming, Worthy! is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and honor and glory and power unto him that is seated on the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. Stand at the threshold of heaven. I want to ask you dear brothers and sisters, that as John saw all these things, the cheering songs, where was he? The faithful man of God who was the beloved disciple, old, never strayed, and yet he was cast at the island of Patmos, abandoned by men, abandoned by friends, and yet as he was there, John, the good soldier of Christ, did not look and bemoan the things that were happening to him. He looked beyond and heard the cheering songs of heaven, heard the cheering songs of Zion. John, who had worked to build the church, as he looked at the church, there was everything that could discourage him as he looked at the church. Just to mention a few. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, he says to, one, to, to, to the first church, which was his church of that day, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because you have left your first love. Looking at the churches, seven of them, there was no encouragement that would come from there. I want to say there are certain people today who are discouraged because they are people who focus on what is happening in the church, what they discuss are all the bad things happening in the church. I want to say, look up and see the Lamb of God on the throne of God interceding for you and for me and forget about what's happening in the churches. Oh, in one of the churches, the church of Semena, uh, Revelation 2 verse 9, it says, I know thy works, thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy uh, which, of those which say they are Jews but are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Looking at the church, he would see people in the church 
who are of the synagogue of Satan. I used to have a dear old pastor, Pastor Chalali, who once said to me, young man, you will always be where God wants you to be, even if the devil inspires the nominating committee. I want to say, my dear brothers and sisters, as you look at the church and you hear some things that are happening in the church, you cannot but help to say there are people of the synagogue of, of, of certain that are in the church, but don't focus on them. Focus on the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And as you look at the church, you will find uh, uh, the, the church of Sadis. He writes and he says, I know thy works, that thou hast a name to be alive, but you are dead. And as he looked at the last church, we should have learned from all the other seven churches. God says, I know your works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would they were hot or cold. Then, but you are lukewarm, and I will spew you out of my mouth. I want to say, Looking at the churches, discouragement, discouragement. Look unto Jesus, the Bible reminds us. And then in chapter 4, he is taken up and he sees the holy God, the creator God upon his throne. And as he sees the creator God upon his throne, looks at himself, looks at the church. He says, ah, no, who can be saved? Who can be saved? Because this is the creator God who created everything, who is going to judge us, who can be saved. And then he saw in the hands of the creator God a book that was written within and without. It was a fool. No one should add anything to what God has written. It was written in and out. No place for anyone to hide. And that book that held the destiny of nations and that book that held the destiny of the church and that book that held the destiny of John and that book that held your destiny and my destiny was in the hands of God. I want to say, dear brothers and sisters, this world is not a runaway train. There's a God who holds this world in his hands. And as he looked, the, the Bible says in, uh, in, in Revelation in chapter 5, no man could be able to hold that book when it was proclaimed. Who can take this book and who can open it and who can read it? And the Bible says he began to cry. I want to say, my dear brothers and sisters, if you focus on human beings, they will let you down. Tears are on your way. He says, I began to cry. But then, if you read verse 5, the Bible says, let's read from verse 4. The Bible says, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah has triumphed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamp as it had been slain having seven horns and air, seven eyes, and the seven spirits of God sent into all the earth. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that is set on the throne. Amen. I want to say <coughs> to you, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. When everyone has left you, and you think you are just alone. God holds your destiny in his hands. My destiny is not in my boss's hands. My destiny is not in the great nations of this world. They don't determine my life. My life is in the hands of him that was able to take the book and to read what is in the book. That's where my destiny is. 
The Bible says here in uh, Revelation 5 verse 12, everyone is praising God and you can begin today, my brother and my sister, to sing the songs of Zion, to sing cheering songs, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, uh, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard uh, saying, blessing and honor and glory and power unto him that is seated on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. We worship God the creator, but not only God the creator. When we see the lamb, we worship God the redeemer. Redeemed, thou I love to proclaim it. If God were only the creator, if God were only the judge, where would I be a sinner as me? But I want to say my brother and sister, I can sing those cheering songs. Where is the Lamb? Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. This is our only hope as we go to our work this day, as we do our activities this day. May the song of the Lamb be upon your lips. May you say quietly without anyone knowing, Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Can you say to yourself, glory, hallelujah, praise him, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah to the lamb. May you say, Savior, let thy kingdom come. Now the power of sin consume. Bring thy blessed millennium, holy lamb. Yes, now the power of COVID consumes, but it does not matter if I die and I die in the hands of the Lord. Hallelujah! The lamb that was slain is not only the lamb that was slain, he was slain, but he is the lamb that rose again. This is why when he approached John on, on the end of Patmos, he says, I am he that was dead and is alive and I have the keys of life forevermore. The key to our health, the key to our life is in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. I present to you the good songs, my brother and sister. I present to you the song of the lamb that was slain to redeem you and me. Are you there this morning? Who wants to say, Lord, help me. I have been singing songs of misery. I have been singing songs of complaining. I have been singing songs of fear. But Lord, Lord, help me that may each uh, moment I feel that I love you and save you and praise you still till we all on his Zion hill, see the lamb that was slain for me. If you are there, wherever you are, just raise your hand as we pray. Our kind heavenly father, we want to thank you for allowing us to start this day with a cheering song that dark as the world can be, we can hear the songs of Zion. We can hear worthy, worthy is the lamb being sung in heaven. But in order for us to sing it in heaven, we must learn to sing it here. Help us not to look at our discouraging circumstances. But dear Lord, everyone who is lifting their hands, may you give them a song in their night. And this song be the song of the lamb that was slain of Calvary to redeem us. We have a redeemer. 
redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Help us always as we go throughout this day to say we are redeemed no matter what we meet in this world. Heaven is coming and we have a foretaste of heaven in the songs, the cheering songs in the book of Revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.